In the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 17, the Bible says, And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. This is happening right now, so get ready for some fascinating stories on Good News for Muslims. Welcome back to part eight of Good News for Muslims. This is a 13-part series, and today we're going to talk about dreams and visions. Uh, in our last program, Shabazz, my guest, shared his, his journey. It was called My Journey to Peace. Uh, but what he left out had to do with the fact that he himself has also had dreams and visions. So we're going to pick up where we left off. And uh, Shabazz, um, you told us quite a bit in the last program. You shared kind of the short version of a lot. But from what you've told me, uh, visions and dreams were part of your, your journey, uh, getting you closer to God and pointing you in the right direction. So just uh, share a little bit with us about that. Okay. Well, uh, not, ju not just myself, but eventually as my brothers and sisters began to accept the message that, that they were hearing from me, they began to have confirmation. And through dreams and visions, God spoke to them. Not visions with them, but more, more with dreams. But one of, my, one of the dreams that stands out in my mind during the time that I was seeking uh, for truth, when I was coming to know more about Christ and I had accepted Him already as my Savior and uh, my life was transformed, was the question, what do I do with Islam? I mean, here's, I had all these years behind me that I was raised in Islam. I mean, it's not like when you're raised in something as a, as a baby, it, it's much more difficult to get rid of it or to... Uh, put it out. So uh, it's part of you. Yeah, it's a part of me. And Christ answered your, that your dilemma through a dream for me one night, and uh, and and the, 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 it was an amazing experience. And and um, uh, and in my dream, he basically led me. He showed me Islam in my religion uh, 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 as a religion that I was following. In my dream, I saw Islam, mm -hmm. and Christ drew me to Himself away from it. Really, and uh, and I be, and I began to see what Christ wants me to do, what God wants me to do, and and who was I to argue? How can a, how can anyone? I, I don't care how old they are, refute these experiences. Not just because they had a dream or a vision, but also because what they've been reading in the Bible, and through uh, circumstances and and providence that God leads someone to the truth. If they reject all that, then they are condemned by God. And if, they re and if they accept God for what He has called them to do, they get rejected by their own family members and, and, and their relatives and their religious community. So I was between a rock and a hard place. Should I accept God, Christ, and reject everything that I knew from before? Or should I accept them and reject this Christ as leading me to Himself? So I made a decision that I will follow Christ. Now, now isn't it true that in, in Islam uh, that a lot of Muslims place a very high regard on God communicating with people through visions and dreams. I've, they do. I've read a number of testimonies of, uh, of Muslims that have had similar experiences and um, you know, they, they're very keen on wanting to interpret their dream if it's not really obvious and there's just a general sense that, that uh, God does guide yes. these days through dreams. And, and just to kind of bring people up to speed, uh, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, and in the New Testament, there's a lot of examples of people having dreams. Uh, Joseph in the Old Testament had dreams. Pharaoh had dreams. King Nebuchadnezzar had dreams. Daniel had dreams. In the New Testament, Joseph, uh, the husband of Mary, 
think I've got, I didn't mark that verse, but it's in Matthew chapter 2, the husband of Mary, when, when uh, Mary first told him that she was expecting a baby, hmm. and that was before they had gotten married, uh, I'm, you know, Joseph was just shocked by that, and his natural inc inclination was that uh, he wanted to put her away because he thought she had had an affair and had been unfaithful to him. And uh, the Bible says here in Matthew chapter 1 that the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When his mother Mary was engaged to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. And then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. Mm. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, you son of David, fear not to take to you Mary your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. So here's a dream about Jesus uh, as the savior given to Joseph. And God is continuing to give dreams today. Absolutely, absolutely. It's happening every day. In fact, uh, most Muslims that f uh, become Christians, uh, upwards 80%, if not 90, they have become Christians through a dream or a vision that they had because they did not have access to a Christian missionary. So God, through dreams and visions, speaks to them about the truth. So you think it's, it's because, uh, like you said, they don't have access. And they're limited. You know, they're in yeah. countries where it's, it's illegal yes. to, uh, for them to listen to Christian radio or to be reading yes. the Bible or going to church. And, and, and Muslims will not treat dreams and visions as a cheap thing. For instance, in the West, if you tell someone, I had a dream last night and I saw Christ, usually they say, well, you, you, you ate too much pizza. That's probably why you had a yeah. dream. But um, in the East, it's just the other way around. Any dream is taken with, with it's not taken with a grain of salt. It's really, really looked upon as something important. I must find out why I had this dream. It's, and so God speaks to them through that. He uses that avenue. And that's, and he did that for you. That he did that for me. And and more than family. once. More than once. And, and not just you, but other members of your family. Absolutely, yeah. And now what do you said? You've got some other yeah, stories I, I have you want to share. Sh stories to uh, share of individuals that I have I think personally if, worked with. Yeah, and I think if you were, you know, if you were to Google uh, dreams being given to Muslims, I think there's a lot out there. I know there is. There's yeah. plenty of stories out there. Plenty. So plenty. share uh, some of those stories. On YouTube, on, on Google. I, I, I know personally of, uh, of, uh, of uh, a man named Abbas. I mean, not only dreams or visions, angels visiting as well, talking to these people and, uh, and, and guiding them. I know of, of, I tell you of a young man named R.F. first. Uh, R.F.? Uh, R.F., yeah. Okay. And I, I ministered to R.F. just recently uh, in, the, in an undisclosed location in Europe. He's an immigrant, a, a refugee from Afghanistan. And, and I ministered to him and to his friends and prepared them for baptism. And um, prior to their baptism, it was very difficult to get them to commit to coming to church. And um, he was also nervous a little bit, worried and all that. And, uh, and uh, one morning he had a dream. And in his dream, he said, I saw my bedroom and I was in my bedroom and, and there was a beautiful light just filled my room. Beautiful, beautiful light and kind of like a pinkish glow. He said that, uh, and I heard the voice of Jesus telling me, you must go to church. You must go to church. <laughs> and um, twice Jesus re uh, uh, tells him to go, that he must go to church. Now, we have already done our job as men telling him he should come to church. But Christ took it under his own hand just to do it directly in a true dream. And after that, he was in church. And, um, <laughs> and it was through, it was an angel. And was, yeah, and God came spoke to, to him. him. To a dream. You know, I, I have a good friend of mine that I worked with him in Texas, and uh, and there's a television network called 3ABN, the Three Angels Broadcasting mm -hmm. Network, which you're familiar with, as well. And uh, when they first got started, they were they were looking for a uh, production manager, and uh, 
unknown to my friend Art, his name was Art, living in Texas, uh, you know, they, they were considering him to become their production manager. And so uh, one night an angel appeared in his daughter's bedroom in Texas and her, her, his daughter was uh, very, very young, just a little, little girl. And this very tall being just came into the room one night and just glowing. And then he said to this little girl, he said, pack up your toys. You're moving to the Three Angels Broadcasting Network. Huh. And this little girl came out of her bedroom and talked to her mom and dad. Um, Pat is her, her mother's name and Art is her father. And which her eyes were just really big. <laughs> and the little girl then told the story. And so Art then called uh, 3ABN and and talked to them and said you know are you looking for a production manager and they said exactly that's exactly what we're looking for and <laughs> so he moved to 3ABN wow. and became their first production manager Praise because this angel appeared in in Candace's room the little girl's and room spoke to the little girl that's right spoke Praise to the little girl pack up your toys you're moving to three angels yeah. broadcasting <laughs> praise god praise yeah. what a story you know it, it's just amazing to meet people that 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 you minister to, and then God follows that work through experiences such as these things. And uh, we're not dependent on these experiences to know that Christ is for real, but He actually follows the work through miracles and dreams and, and visions and angels and all that. And I had the privilege of meeting another young man. He's in his, in his 30s, early 30s, and uh, I was in a city in Europe, and I was supposed to do a radio program for our church, a live radio program that evening for our church. And uh, around six o'clock, the Lord impressed me heavily, I mean, a big way, impressed me. Go across the street, go to that church that's across the street. You, you know, I, have a, I have a business there for you. You have to do something for me. I didn't know what it was. All I knew, the impression told me, I must go there. I told the radio uh, director, I said, I'll be back. I'll try to be back. In case I don't make it back, play re a rerun of an older program. And uh, she said, well, just make it back, make it back. I said, I will try my best. I, I ran over this, across the street and I went over to that church and, and I went to a, a room upstairs where they were having a Bible studies with, with a bunch of Muslims, a bunch of Muslims. And um, this is not our church, this is a, another church. And, and I went there, I introduced myself, I sat down with them. And, and, and then I looked to my right, there was a man sitting in his early 30s. And the Lord said, this is why I send you, you need to speak to him. And I said, okay, Lord, I'll speak to him. And I waited for an opportunity. At the end of the meeting, I got up looking around to go talk to him. He walked over to me. He walked over to me and he leaned over and he whispered in my ear, he said, you have something to tell me, don't you? I had a dream and you were in my dream last night. You have three things to tell me. You, have sa you said amen to me three times. And uh, we studied the Bible. He has accepted our belief and faith and and it was just a fantastic experience that he saw me in his dream. And he said, wow. in my dream, I saw that you had come from far away. And I had. I had come from the United States to Europe just for that ministry there for just one month. So he um, saw you in the dream. That's right. And before we had even met. Isn't that something? And God is able. And so God is speaking to people. I mean, uh, why are these, why suddenly all these Muslims are having these experiences, not just in one country or in one city? It's happening simultaneously everywhere and on the globe. it's happening in, in Muslim countries in like Muslim Pakistan, countries. Afghanistan, Absolutely. in India. Absolutely. I know, of a, I know of, a, of a man in Iran that um, his daughter became a Christian and he was absolutely opposed to her becoming a Christian and disowned her, basically disowned her and, and kicked her out of his home and everything. And, and the story goes, and this is a true story. He actually one day went to one of the, one of his, he had a summer home, way out, clear out of town where there are no people, just one road, and uh, the nearest store or shop would be about more than an hour from where he was. And no neighbors, nothing like that. And he went there and one day to take care of his home because he had, he wanted to fix some windows and stuff. So he went there and, um, as he went to go to the door, he knows, oh, I, don't, I forgot my keys. So he went back to the car and the keys were inside the car and the doors were locked. Oh. And he didn't know what to do. 
And he stood there for an hour, hour became two hours, three hours. He didn't know what to do. Suddenly, he got an impression to pray to Jesus. He had been praying to Allah and he, he didn't know what to do. He was desperate. He was about to break the window with a, with a rock when he was impressed to uh, uh, pray. And he prayed to Jesus. And when he opened his eyes, the door was open. Wow. The door was open. As a cons consequence, consequently, as a result of that dream, he became a Christian. Wow. He reunited like, with his daughter. That's kind of like you when you yes. prayed and prayed and prayed for your brother to take his medicine and he didn't. And then you decided, well, I'm going to pray have to this Jesus. impression. I'm going to try praying to Jesus. And then, boom, right away, that's right. he took his medicine. And, and it's just, it's happening all the time. We have records of these things. These are factual and um, testimonials from all over the world all over the world and it's just amazing. It's incredible. I think about of um, Bashir, a Syrian man, a Sunni Arab, who was actually working for Al-Nusra. Al-Nusra is, is an offshoot of Al-Qaeda, uh, a terrorist group, and he was with them. He, was, he had been with them for years. He was a cold-blooded man that was involved in a lot of um, uh, fightings. He had seen a lot of people die. One day, as he was uh, uh, spying on the enemy, on the soldiers, the government soldiers of uh, Syria, he said as he was looking with his binocular, he, could, he was close enough that he could see, and he saw how those Muslim soldiers were executing his friends, killing them. He, it dawned on him. He said, Why did, what's going on? Why are we Muslim? Why are we killing, killing each, other? each other? And he said he, it, he, he got disillusioned with this whole concept of Islam and everything. He didn't know what to do. So he took his wife, he quit with al-Nusra, and he fled the country, he went to Turkey. And, and there, while there with his wife, his wife got seriously ill, critically ill, and, and she, he needed help, and he couldn't get any help. So he desperately, uh, because he was desperate, he called his cousin in Canada, who had become a Christian, and said, can you please pray that my wife doesn't die? And he prayed. And a couple of days later, his wife was completely healed, <laughs> completely healed, to the point that he and his wife began to s contemplate the idea that they had been wrong and they, they need to become Christians. And they started searching, so they con they, their cousin connected them with a Christian missionary in Turkey, and they talked, and during that time, they began to have dreams. And in their dreams, Christ was speaking to them and telling them that they must follow him. And soon he became a Christian, and now he is pastoring a home church in Turkey. He refuses to go anywhere as a refugee. He doesn't want to go to Europe or to the United States. He wants to stay in Turkey and minister to his fellow Syrian brothers and sisters. And he has a home church. They meet weekly at his home, and many are being baptized because of his ministry. Wow. And he was part of Al-Qaeda, al you al said? Al-Nusra, which was an offshoot of Al-Qaeda, another terrorist organization. It's just, it, it, I mean, uh, we're, we are seeing miracles happening to Muslims just that, that have never been seen before. Not, at least not as it is being seen right now. The rates of these dreams and these visions are incredible. I think of Muhammad. I baptized him a year ago. A year and a half ago, I baptized him. Muhammad, an 18-year-old Afghan young man, he was de contemplating whether or not he should become a Christian or not. He had been convicted. He had been tr transformed in his thinking that, yes, uh, I, I can see there is love in Christ. I can see that I must do this. And, and in, his, in the privacy of his bedroom one day, he was reading the Bible, and he came across this verse where Jesus promised that in my Father's house are many mansions and I'll go to prepare a place for and you. And that was one of my dad's favorite verses. Yes, and, and mine my, too. Yeah, when well, my dad was on his, on his deathbed one time, he was, uh, and I remember that thought because I'll just oh, yeah. share this quickly, but uh, it was just a little over a month ago, my dad was, was dying, and I remember being, on, uh, being with him, and at one point, he just kind of went to sleep as we were talking, and which he did a lot. And so I would just take a walk or something, and then I'd come back and, or just, you know, read the Bible or twiddle my thumb or do something and then uh, waiting for him to wake up. And then at one point, it was just amazing to me, he woke up and as soon as he woke up, 
he started just quoting that verse. Amen. He was just like out of a deep sleep, he opened his eyes and he went, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Amen. And if I do, I will come again. And my dad just rattled that verse off just right out of sleep and it's just powerful. Amazing. God's Praise word the is, Lord. is powerful. That's right, that's right. Amazing. So keep going with that yeah. thought. Well, Muhammad was sitting in his bedroom and reading that verse, and as he was reading that verse, John 14, John 14 he, said, he said, when I was just reading that verse, he said, I read it, but I just couldn't understand what I just read. What is, what is Jesus talking about? And as he was contemplating the thought, suddenly the page in his Bible, all by itself, it went back one page to the beginning of the verse. And he said, what was that? How? And he looked at the windows to see if the windows are open. Is there a draft somewhere? All windows are closed. No, no draft. fans it's, in the room. It's no fans because it's winter. It's cold. So, and and uh, the heater is, is, a, is a radiator heater, so it's not blowing air. So he, he said, that was strange. So he went back to where he was. And then suddenly, it page went back again, one page. And then he just, now he's kind of like shocked. And then he's very carefully, he, he turns the page back and he waits to see what happens. And then almost immediately, it turns back again. Three times. Three times. Wow. And then he dawns on him. God wants him to read again what he had missed. He, when he read it, he said, then I got the blessing. Then what, I understood. So what did he read again? In my Father's house are many mansions. mansions. If it were not so, I would I have, have told, told you. you. And I go to prepare a place for you. And I, if I, I go and prepare a place I for you, come again. I will come again. And receive you unto myself. And, 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 and that became the sign that he had waited for. Because of that experience, four other Muslims also were baptized. Because of that experience with that angel, wow. turning the pages for him. Four of so his it must close have been friends. An angel, an it invisible was an angel, angel just yes. reaching down yes. and pulling. The Lord the page. has said, "You must read it again. Don't <laughs> fight with me. Read it." Wow. And, and very gently, kindly, just page going back and forth, and uh, and the Lord won that battle, and and uh, and he and his friends all were baptized. Praise God! And wow. and um, and I just can, I can tell you that God is doing mighty mighty things with these people. Um, I think of. Um, got five minutes. If yeah, you got another I story. I can tell or you two. one more story. Okay. Story. Uh, I I ministered to an Afghan family, family of seven, Abbas. Not highly educated. He didn't have any formal training in anything, and they had come to Turkey as um, as refugees. I ministered to them. I was ministering to people there for a while, and um, I can't say the name of the city, but I was ministering to in that country and. And Abbas yeah, and undisclosed his undisclosed location. Undisclosed location. I have to protect some of these people. Sure. And, and, and Abbas had an issue with should he work on the day that we go to church or not? And he, he said to me, he said, Brother Shabazz, that's my highest sell selling day. He sold cotton candy. That's all he could do. He sold cotton candy to take care of a family of seven. They lived it was a very difficult time for them. And I told them, if you be faithful to God, He has promised that He will be faithful to you. And he's, He took God's word, He took my word, and He said, I will do it. That uh, day He didn't work, He went to church, because He would not come to church all the time. And I told him, unless I cannot baptize you if you're not faithful completely to God. And um, so He made a decision that He will be faithful. So. He came to church and I was excited to see him. And he told me, he said, I've made a commitment to God. I'm going to be in church. I'm going to go tomorrow and make my sale. So the next day he went to make his sales, and, but he wasn't able to sell. But there are not as many people out as there were the day before. And he said he went up and down this park, hoping that people would buy his cotton candies. He sold one in an hour. That was terrible. And he said, well, how many hours am I going to be out here? And as he was just, it just, filled with thoughts of what he should do, he, he uttered a simple prayer, Lord, help me. Just at that moment, a man walks up to him wearing a suit. And the man speaks to him in perfect Persian, Farsi, calling him by name, Abbas, why are you so down? And he says, 
Sir, I don't know. And he doesn't even think. He says, I don't know. I, I just can't sell my cotton candies. He says, go to the other side of the street. You'll sell every one of them. He, he automatically obeys. It's kind of like the Jesus telling yeah. uh, Peter and the fish, fishermen, cast right. your net on the other side That's and you'll right. catch fish. Exactly. <laughs> and he went to the other side and in less than 10 minutes, he sold every cotton candy that he had. Wow. And he said, I looked frantically everywhere for that nice looking man who knew his wearing name. a suit, who knew his name, how he knew his name, how he spoke Persian in a Turkish country so perfectly. <laughs> he could not find him out. And, and, he, and, and he dawned on him that God has sent his angel. Yeah, the, in the book of Hebrews it says, uh, be not forgetful to, enter, to entertain strangers, for some have entertained angels Amen. unawares. Amen. And there's a lot of examples in the Bible Amen. of angels taking the form of men to talk to us. That's right. That's right. These, these dreams and visions are, are happening all the time. We have a, vi a village in Iran, and I cannot name the village also. And, and uh, In fact, the name was never given to me because it's being kept secret that the entire population of that village, some four or five hundred people, simultaneously, same evening, had I've, the same dream. I've heard about that yeah. village. And they... Every single person in that village secretly made a decision to become Christians because they all saw Jesus in their dreams telling them that they must become Christians and follow Christ. Oh, wow. And so it's, um, amazing things yeah. are happening in the world. It's amazing. Wow. Well, this is the fulfillment of prophecy. Mm -hmm. Like we read uh, a little bit earlier in the book of, uh, of Acts, chapter 2, which is quoting from Joel in the Old Testament. And I'll read it again. The Bible says, it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And then verse 19 says, I will show wonders in heaven above, signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire. You know, I think about the California fires mm. uh, and vapors of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. Amen. And then verse 21 says, It shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. This verse is happening right in front of us all around the world. God is giving visions. He's giving dreams, especially to Muslim people, showing them who Jesus is and helping them to, uh, to find peace and, and His love. And this verse is telling us this is going to be happening as we get closer to the day of God. God wants us to get ready. He wants you to be ready, me to be ready, all of us to be there together. We hope you enjoyed watching Good News for Muslims with Steve Wolberg and Shabazz. This entire 13-part series is now available on DVD. To order from within the U.S., call Whitehorse Media at 1-800-782-4253. To watch the series online or for more information, visit the website www.goodnewsformuslims.com.